By the way, I loved, you know, the analogy, you know, that Jody used with the with the ten dollars, you know, with with she, you know, had to had Daniel give he gave she gave him ten dollars and then one dollar back, you know, to illustrate the tithe. In my sermon today, overcoming everything, mine's overcoming the fool, and I I, I just was inspired. I should probably do a similar analogy. So, is there anyone out there who's over? 20. And, and you have a wallet. Uh, okay, can, can we have this guy right here in the front? You have a wallet with you, Adam? Okay, come on up here. Uh, I just, I, I want to teach you something. And so I want you to pull out your wallet. Do you have uh, any dollar bills in there? Here, I'm going to teach you this really great illustration. Let, let me see them. Do, do you have any larger bills, like a $5 bill, by any chance? You have. Let's give them a round of applause. Go ahead and sit down. Anyway, can everyone say, don't be a fool? Can you say it with me? Don't be a fool. Don't be a fool. By the way, he gave me my own money back. We plan this ahead of time. <laughs> By the way, we are as dumb as we look. Just in case you were wondering, we're, we're right this. Listen, um, when I'm talking about this series here, and by the way, hi kids. Let me see your wave of hands, all you kids out there. Come on, get them up high. There you are out there. Now, I'm not talking about you, your parents being the fool. We know that all the fools are outside the church, Right? Right? Just everyone say, they're out there. Because in here, we are full of wisdom at all times. Right? Just go to your dictionary, and you'll see this face. Right under wisdom. How many know that sometimes we can be the fool? You know, Jody and I, when we first got married, probably our first three to five years, we would read the Proverbs every single day together. And it would be like, you know, if it was the 31st, and we'd read the 31st proverb. If it was 28th, we'd read the 28th proverb. We would just correlate with the days. And it would be so depressing because it would always talk about the fool in the proverbs. And then you get to that chapter and it says, the fool does this. And you go, and I do that. And I'm like, I hate this book. Why do we got to read the Bible? Can't we read Green Eggs and Ham or some other Dr. Seuss book together? It'll bring up stories and creativity and colors, and, but no. And if you don't understand the grace of God through the cross, then you're just going to be overwhelmed by being a fool because you're just going to think, oh, God doesn't forgive me, I'm a fool, and you won't be able to admit it. You'll be stuck in your religion trying to pretend like you're wiser than you are. Okay, how many can admit that we're a fool sometimes? How many know that there are fools around us? Point to the biggest fool that you know. Okay, there's a lot of kids pointing at their parents. I'm a little concerned. Some of them I understand. Sorry about that, Kligmans. <laughs> I, you know, Rob was telling me that I should have had a big picture of, of Mr. T. I think it was Rob, you know, where Mr. T's looking at you like this, and he goes, I pity the fool. Right? But um, let's look at that. Lord, I pray that you open up our hearts. We want to look at the fool. We don't want to be the fool. But I pray that you give us inspiration so that we know, Lord, how the fool is so that we don't continue to walk in it. Teach us to walk in the wisdom and the fear of the Lord so that we can find prosperity and blessing. In Jesus' name, how many say amen? Amen. 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 Let's look at the fool defined here. The one, the fool is the one who disregards the fear of God and thinks and acts as if they can ignore God's ways and see no consequences. 
It, it's the fool. He, he, he continues to do what he shouldn't do. And I'm going to talk about attributes. It's going to be um, a little bit from the negative side to point you to the positive side. Here are some biblical words that are corresponding with this. The fool. Okay? Foolish. Foolishness. Foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child. Right? Discipline. Discipleship. Drives it out. Folly. You know? The woman folly cries aloud to the streets, looking to see who will come and follow her. Come here, you simple ones, and I'll show you how to get ahead. Right? That's the woman folly. And the woman wisdom also cries out. It says, come, learn from me. Turn to God. Hear his ways. There's folly. So now I'm going to talk about this fool described. Don't be a fool. I'm, I'm just going to share one story with you. It's a, a story I had you know, when I used to be a waiter, Jody and I used to worked in the same restaurant, but we didn't know each other at this really nice hotel downtown San Jose. And I was kind of at the bottom end of this job. It was one of those ones where you wore a tuxedo, like a, literally a tux, and very fine restaurant. Jody and I both played piano, but at different times. And then I was a bartender. She was a cocktail waitress. I was a, then I was a waiter, and then uh, she was a, a waitress. And I had a guy there that I worked with who was studying to be a lawyer, and he would memorize everybody's order. And I thought to myself, I could do that. I think I could do that. Now, I did have some substance issues at the time. But he would go up to a, a table, and it, he could have, it could be a party of eight, it could be a party of 12, it didn't matter. And this was an upscale restaurant, so he'd have his hands behind his back, and, and he'd say, yeah, I take your order. And people would give him his order, and he would memorize the whole thing, come back, talk to the chef, and get everything prepared exactly. And so I thought, I'm going to do this. So I went to the table, the first table, and I thought, all right, here it goes. It was four guys. But it was four guys in Italian suits with Rolex watches, okay? I could tell they all owned companies and maybe countries. I don't know. <laughs> but I, I walked in there, and I, I, said, I said, okay. I said, let me tell you a little bit about our specials. I was telling them about it. And I said, okay, sir, can we start with you? And he goes, we'll just order everything at once, our drinks and everything. And I go, okay, no problem. So I said, what will you drink? And he says, yeah, I'm going to have a vodka tonic. And I remember that first one. And I go, okay, vodka tonic. I'm going to hang it on this little fruit over here. Vodka tonic. And then he goes, okay. And then I'm going to have the meat steak for your salad. Okay. And then he started ordering his food. He wanted a medium rare. He wanted to make sure the potatoes had the thing on the side. And I go, okay. And we got to the second guy. And then it dawned on me. I do not remember anything the first guy ordered. <laughs> I'm telling you, I could not think of one thing that he ordered. What did this guy order? And so... Uh, so I went to the second guy, and I said, okay, I'm going to start with the second guy. I'm going to go all the way around, and I'm going to go back to the first guy later, <laughs> after I get my courage back up. So I took with the second guy, and he started ordering, and I, as soon as he, he was done, I realized I'm not going to remember anything. <laughs> so the third guy ordered, and the fourth guy ordered. They were getting into details, and I was going, uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh, got that. You want it on the side? Extra garlic? Oh, yeah, just tell me everything, because I'm not thinking remembering anything you're saying. You can just talk and talk. <laughs> and so I finished, and I just said, I'll get that for you right away. <laughs> then I walked back, because the only reason I had that job is because my older brother got me that job. How many got a job like that before? And so I went back to my brother, and I said, I don't remember anything they ordered. And he goes, well, go out there and get it again. And I go, I can't. <laughs> and he looked at me and he goes, you're an idiot. And it's one of those times where you just owned it. I just felt deep in my heart, I am an idiot. How many have felt that before? You just know it. It just feels right. It's part of you. I'm an idiot. And out he went. And he said, I'm sorry, uh, but the previous waiter died. <laughs> and the 
problem is I had another table that was near it. So every time I went by this table, it was like. <laughs> Can we get help? No. Because <laughs> I don't remember who you guys are. <laughs> Can everyone say, don't be a fool? Be a fool. You got to know yourself. And you got to know what you can do. I love these CBS MOM graduates. They're just getting started. And it's kind of like part of learning and gaining and not being a fool is learning who you are, learning who God is, and starting to walk in that. One last story here. A woman's husband had been slipping in and out of a coma for several months. Yet she stayed by her husband's bedside every single day. One day, he came to, and he motioned her, come closer. And she sat by him. As she sat by him, he whispered, and his eyes were just full of tears. And he goes, you know what? You've been with me all through the bad times. When I got fired, you were there to support me. When my business failed, you were there. When I got shot, there you were by my side. When we lost the house, you were right there. You stayed right here. When my health started failing, you were right by my side. You know what? And she said, what, what dear? She gently asked, and she smiled, her heart starting to fill with warmth. He said, I'm starting to think you're bad luck. <laughs> now, now get out of here. Can everyone say, don't be a fool? Don't you love that story? It just warms my heart to share it with you. How many know you picked the wrong church this morning? You just did. You just didn't know why. Turn to somebody and say, because you're a fool. Don't be a fool. Okay, I'm going I'm to give, all joking aside, I'm, I'm going to give this a couple things, four things here about the fool that are really going to help you, I promise you. Number one, fools, say it with me, fools don't listen. They don't listen. And, and I, I love this proverb, the way of fools, the way that they live, the way that they're thinking, it seems right to them. Okay? It, it, it's like, of course it's right. It's not like the fool is ever going to go, oh, that might not be right. The fool thinks it's right. And he doesn't get any advice. It says, but the wise listen to advice. He doesn't get any counsel. Uh, I have times, and if you're one of these people, trust me, I'm not trying to pick you out. But I have people come up to me here, and maybe you've had the same experience. You're a boss, and your employee comes to you, or someone that you can learn from comes to you. And, and some people have come up to me, and they go, Pastor, I need to talk to you. And, and I go, okay, I need, I need your input. It's almost like they realized that advice was good, but then when they actually started talking to you, they didn't listen to anything you said. I, I once met with a pastor, a very, um, uh, uh, someone with a great stature. And I, I went there to get advice. But because I was nervous and self-conscious, I ended up talking the first 15 minutes. And I remember the pastor looked at me after 15 minutes and he goes, Eric, can you hold on a second? I go, yeah. And he goes, now I want you to be quiet. I go, who do you think you're talking to, buddy? Do you realize I could kick your butt right now? And, and, then, and then for the next 30 minutes, he talked. And, and, and all I did was listen. I trusted that he knew me. I trusted that he was listening to God. And all of a sudden, I got wisdom that saved me 10 years 15 years, 20 years. How many got people around you with wisdom? Come on. Okay, I'm going to teach you something. Be quiet and listen. Amen? Don't be the fool. There's so much you can learn. The, the fool doesn't listen. Uh, 14, Proverbs 14, 12 says, there's a way that seems right to a man. It seems right, but the end leadeth to death. Many know this scripture. It, it seems right at the time, but the end, it, it, it goes back wrong. I, I talked to a guy who's his business, and, he, and I said, how's it going? How's your work going? How's business going? He said, well, my bosses are running the company into the ground. It's kind of like, 
but they didn't ask any of the employees what's going on with the customer. They're not asking. They're not asking the right questions. It's kind of like you have help right there. Some of you with your spouses, you know, you just need to ask them, how am I doing as a spouse? And they go, ah, uh, you could grow in this area. Sometimes you need to talk to your kids and go, how do you think we're doing, kids? You're doing pretty good. But maybe they can give you some input. How many say amen? The wise man listens and grows wiser still. I love this Proverbs 18, 13. It says, the fool, say it with me, the fool. The fool answers before listening. It's kind of like before it even comes out, like, tell me about it. Yeah, but let me say this. Boy, I've been this. It says, that is folly and shame. And Proverbs 28, 26 summarizes it. Whoever trusts in his own mind is a fool. But he who walks in wisdom will be kept safe. You might, your scripture might say, be delivered. You know, it's like you trust in your own mind. I got it. I've got it figured out. I, I, I see people, they, they think things through, then they consult themselves, then they write it on a whiteboard and confirm it with themselves. Then when people give input, they defend themselves, and then they carry out their own plans, and they wonder why it leads to death, why it leads to emptiness, why it doesn't go somewhere. You know, I love this quote. It's not up there, but it says, a learned fool is more a fool than an ignorant fool. Isn't that a great quote? Say it with me. Say, fools don't listen. Fools don't listen. Fools don't listen. Number two, fools don't learn. They just don't learn. And I love this. I love how the Bible uses these analogies because they're like gross analogies, aren't they? Like how many, how many own a dog? How many have seen that dog vomit? It's all, it's all the bad stuff that the dog rejected. And so what does the dog do? He eats the vomit. Ew, you can't talk like that in church. Of course you can. This is the scripture. I'm just doing exegesis on it. I'm, t- I'm taking the scripture apart. As a dog returns to its vomit, so a fool repeats his folly. He does it again. They repeat it. Like he just blew it. Like, I'll sit with someone in a county jail, and, and I'll go, so what'd you do? This and that, and this and that. Then they get out, and then a year later, you go, what'd you do? Same thing. Like, you didn't get it. Like, you just didn't understand it. You know? Did you listen to your spouse? No, I didn't. So why, why are you still having relationship problems? Because I'm still not listening. It's like you repeat your folly over and over and over again, it becomes deja vu. You know, I asked uh, Rebecca Jackson, who's my, my son's girlfriend, I said, what would you do if I paid you $100,000 a year and you could do whatever you wanted to do? And she gave me a great answer. She said, I would just sit and learn. And I go, that is a great answer. Uh, that, that, that's a great starting point, isn't it? How many want to learn? There is so much you can learn. Some of these CVSOM graduates, it's like taking the Bible on for the first time and really just tackling it in a very serious way. And you grow in it and you grow in it and you think, I don't know how much it's going to help. And all of a sudden, a year passed and you go, wow, that helped a lot. Well, wait till another year goes by and another year goes by and another year goes by. It's going to give you such peace. It's going to give you such success. It's going to give you such contentment. There's so much that the scripture does. All right, fools don't learn. Proverbs 26, 12. Do you see a person wise in their own eyes? There's the one trusting in his own mind. There is more hope for a fool than for them. If there's nothing worse in life, it's being worse than a fool. It's like the wise man, the fool, and then here's you. Here's me. Isn't that terrible? It's kind of like you can be worse than a fool. It's like, and how does it happen? It reminds me of the scriptures I used a couple weeks ago where it says you cast a glance at riches and the Bible says, then they're gone. And I never, how many don't want to ever cast a glance at riches? How many know the fool is going to cast a glance at riches? They're going to get the catalog and they're going to go, I wonder if I'm going to be rich someday. Yeah. 
Look at that house. I want this. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with looking at nice houses, but you start, it starts to internalize in your heart, and God goes, okay, that's gone. How many would rather just live in the moment and trust God with your heart and let him lead you? Amen? It's like the world goes after those things. Proverbs 13, 6 says, wise people think before they act, but fools don't. It's like they think it through. They ponder it. They get advice about it. They, they're open to other people's opinions about it, the right people, the prudent. I'll talk about that more in a minute. Fools don't. They just, they just act. It's like a response. It's almost like they'll blurt something out, the fool, and then they'll say, why'd you say that? that now you just alienated everybody. I'm just being true to myself. This is just who I am. I just say stupid things. <laughs> well, that's really great. Fools don't think. Turn to someone and say, fools don't think. And I, and I love this little quote I have there. I, I couldn't find the author, but it says, the fool is not so much lacking in mental powers, but lives as one who misuses them. It's like the fool can have knowledge. They might even have some learning, but they can't seem to apply it anywhere. It, it's kind of like the boss who has to do everything. You, you know, the boss, he starts his company and then he goes, man, I got to get the sales going. So he starts getting sales going. He goes, and I got to build the product. So he starts building the product. And he goes, you know, and I got to follow up with everything. And pretty soon his business, instead of growing like this, grows like this. Because he never gets advice. He never gets consultation. Do you know that companies who get external consultation do so much better than ones that don't? I work for multi-million dollar companies, even billion dollar companies, and I was surprised at how much money they spent just in getting advice. They would bring financial companies in and say, tell us and examine what we're doing and tell us how we can get better. I, you know, I do a lot of weddings. Most people spend a lot of money on the wedding. Man, they got their hors d'oeuvres just right. You know, the flower girls have the perfect petals of flowers that they're throwing out. The dresses are perfect. And then how much do they spend on thousands of dollars? And how much do they spend on their marriage? Nothing. Two bucks. You suggest, hey, you should take a marriage class. You should do this. Don't you think we ought to spend more on the marriage than the wedding ceremony? Yeah. How many say amen? amen? And don't you think you ought to spend a little investment in your character, in your wisdom, and your life, and get some input rather than just doing it on your own? I can't tell you how many. I'm the first one to just go, I don't know, tell me. And if I had the $100,000 or $100 million, I would hire 10 smart people to, that would follow me around. And every time I just be able to turn to them and I go, I wanted to know that about nuclear physics. Teach me. And they'd have to. <laughs> It'd be awesome. Wouldn't that be fun? Think about how many things you'd learn. I'd have one person follow me around and I'd just go, tell me all the stupid things I did at the end of the day. <laughs> We'd have to get a lot of hard disk space. Yeah, it's called marriage. <laughs> Man, you are in such deep trouble. <laughs> Not only is your wife smarter than you. <laughs> Pete's going, I know. Listen, say it with me. Say, fools don't learn. Fools don't learn. They don't learn. Let's say this one with me. Say, fools don't listen. And then the third one here, fools don't advance. That's number three. They don't, they don't advance. They, they don't move forward. They, they get stuck. It's kind of like it's round and round they go, and they can't seem to, why am I not getting a breakthrough? And, and I'll just mention finances one more time. I, I see people, it's such a struggle. I'm going to start giving to God. They know it's only going to be for three weeks, and they're going to give up. And God knows when they start that it's not real. And so they wonder why. They just go round and round. And God's saying, I'm not going to fortify a life without faith. I'm going to make you struggle so that you'll hunger for what's right. 
you'll hunger because once I relieve you of this, where money's not the issue, you'll be able to live free. It is awesome to live free and not worry about it. Amen? Those you know are the ones that have made God first in this. You know, I encourage you. And not just with that, it's with your time, it's with your heart. You know, a couple of the CBSOM graduates talked about making God first in their relationship and their priority. It's not about earning your salvation. Thank God for the cross. We're saved because of what Jesus did. We're not saved by what we did. But now, let's live a life worthy of the calling we have. Amen? Let's, let's match up to it. Fools don't advance. It, there's a lot of different versions of this one. Some people know that suffers harm. But, but I love this version. It's just, it just concise. Walk with the wise and become wise. Amen? So look around at your circle of influence. And I'm not talking about people that you might reach out to or someone you're mentoring who's struggling. I'm talking about your compadres. Okay? If you look at them and they don't look like a fool, you're probably doing okay. But it says associate. You start partnering. You start making a companion of the fool, and you're going to suffer harm. You're going to get in trouble. And, and all you have to do is look at them, and they're going, how's their life going? Nosedive. And you're going, hey, I should nosedive with them. We're friends. What are you doing? Hey, I'm taking a hammer and hitting myself over the head. Bam! Hey, we're friends. Bam! <laughs> and then you tell them, man, you got to follow God. Put the hammer down. And people go, I don't want to abandon my friends. And I go, you're abandoning your friends now. Why don't you become something so that you can lead your friends? So that you can love your friends and see their relationships flourish. So you can be an inspiration for your friends. I mean, I still get calls from, they can't believe what's happened in my life. I was like full of the full turbo mode. Right? With nitrous oxide. Boom, super full. Right? And it's like, now they're going like, gosh, you know, my, they always call me up and they go, you still married, Eric? And I go, yeah. Tr trust me, if, if we weren't believers and had the Holy Spirit in us, Jody would have left me 10,000 times. How many know this to be true? Right? She would have killed me right before I killed her. How many, how many know that, that God changes you? And each time she looked at me and I looked at her in despair, going, that's it? And then I look at her, that's it? God would change us and make us more. Listen, walk with the wise and become wise. You associate with fools, you're going to get in trouble. So check the faces around you. Proverbs 17, 12, I love this one. This is a great scripture. This is great. Better to meet a bear robbed of her cubs than a fool bent on folly. It's like you see a fool on a foolish rampage. Just go into the, you'd be better off going into the forest, finding a mama bear who just lost her cubs and putting yourself in front of it. And how many think that's a scary thought? <laughs> that is a scary thought, this big grizzly bear hunting you down. But that's better than a fool about to go full turbo mode, right? I, I can give you all kinds of stories, but I won't. Proverbs 21.20, and this is, this is one that people rarely understand because it's not just about financial blessing. There's more to this treasure. It says, precious treasure and oil. It's like the, the commodities of the day, the trading uh, currency of the day. They're in a wise man's dwelling. But a foolish man, he devours. He devours all he has. When, when Jody and I first got married, she was a good steward, and I was a different kind of steward. And she, she, and she told me, she goes, we're going to put 100 bucks aside every month. And so she showed me what the budget was, and that meant we had no money to spend. And I said, What? 
And she goes, don't worry, God's going to take care of it. And I go, what? And sure enough, no matter what, she goes, it's the, we're going to give God first. And she goes, and then we're going to give this hundred bucks to, to our future and our savings. And we're going to trust God to provide for the rest. And I would have done completely the opposite. I'd have provided for me first. And then I'd provide for my other split personality. <laughs> then I would have given you know, to God first. And then I would have spent the rest. How many know exactly what I'm talking about? And it's like, that's the fool. But make it first. Can money stay in your pocket? Do you have a savings account? You know, uh, we had a pastor friend of ours who uh, pastored, he started the Hope Chapel, which is like the Calvary Chapel. It comes out of our four square movement. Both Calvary Chapel and Hope Chapel come out of our movement. And uh, Hope Chapel just uh, remained uh, as part of our mission. And this pastor, when his kids turned 16, he started charging them rent. Oh, I can hear the 16-year-olds out there going, don't tell my parents this. <laughs> and, but, but I'll tell you the rest of the story. What he did is he put the money in a bank account without them knowing it. And he put it in investments and saved it up. And he said that it was about $130,000 to $150,000 by the time they had moved out with interest and all the investments that he made. That he said that when they got married, he said he, he was a surprise gift for them to buy a house. Now that's called wisdom. Amen? He said that his kids would complain about it. None of the other kids are 16 have to pay rent. I know. But if he would have told him, but I'm saving it for you, he would have been the good guy. But he told them, he says, I'm doing this for your good so that you learn stewardship. And he goes, then each kid learned to be content by paying the rent, being a part of a contributor. Uh, you know, how many want to grow in wisdom? Come on. Turn to somebody and say, hey, don't be a fool. There's an inheritance here. I'm almost done here. Everyone say, praise God. Praise God. The wise will inherit honor, but the fool gets disgrace. And that's where it is. The inheritance, God really wants us to be someone who gives an inheritance. It doesn't have to be financial. Some of you have struggled. That's okay. You pass down something of your heart, part of your legacy, part of who you are, your character. If you've totally blown it, pass on repentance, remorse, so that they catch it. Sorrow. Show them how you can do things better. Amen? And some of us have a mixture of those. We have all of those to give. And, and the fool gets disgrace because he hasn't thought it through. He hasn't worked it through. 15.2 says, The tongue of the wise make knowledge appealing, but the mouth of the fool belches out foolishness. It's like the wise man, his tongue moves you forward because the fool doesn't listen and the fool doesn't learn, and the fool doesn't move forward. He's around the mulberry bush. He keeps going round and round, faces the same trials over and over again. And it says, but the, but the wise man, he makes the knowledge of everything that he's learning that he could pass it on. You learn something, and then you could pass it on. Here you go. Here's some things that I learned. Not a know-it-all, but just someone who shares. Okay? Number four, and this is the last point. Fools don't believe God. And I could say believe in God. I was raised as an atheist. So I'm not trying to pick on the atheist. I'm just telling you that God is picking on the atheist. It says, the fool says in his heart. As contrasting, for those of you who know the scriptures, Romans 1, 19 and 20, where it says God's invisible qualities, the things that he made the earth, his unseen power, are obvious that he made it. You didn't make it. I mean, the dog looks at man and goes, wow, there's something smarter than me. Can I have a bone? The man looks in the mirror and he says, I'm the smartest thing that there is. Really? Is that what you think? You don't think there's anything beyond substance and matter, that there's no transcendence? What about your soul? What about who you are? What about who put this all together? You didn't and you can't explain it. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. So he is in the universe by himself. And he is the arbitrator of all good and evil and morality. He is in charge of all right and wrong. And listen to this. This is such an excellent scripture. 
Proverbs 19.3, because it's so true. And have you ever done this? It says the person's own folly, their own foolishness leads to their ruin, yet their heart rages against the Lord. Have you ever done something so stupid that at the end of it you said, God, how come you're doing this? And God's looking back at you and he goes, you did this. How many have experienced that before? Right? And, and, it's, I, and it was almost like my whole early Christian walk. I do something real stupid and go, God's punishing me. Yeah, God told you. He woke up and God said, do this really stupid thing. How many know God doesn't give that kind of wisdom? God, God's always trying to get you out of it. Now, the grace of God gets us out of our foolishness, doesn't it? But just say it. Say it's my own folly. Okay? That caused me problems. And then say, I don't need to rage against the Lord. You know, I don't say it with me. I don't need to rage against the Lord. Okay? Because if there's somebody on your side, it's going to be God. Right? He's seen your raging. He's seen your foolishness. He's seen everything. And God says he looks at man's wisdom, man's best wisdom, man's best plans, man's best smarts. God says, compared to the way I see things, that's complete foolishness. Because you don't know the beginning to the end. You make all kinds of plans, and people make plans and start businesses and do all kinds of things without God. And then they wonder why it becomes nothing. Why they work for six months or two years or five years in complete futility and then come to the end and go, how come it didn't work? And it's like, you didn't ask God anything. This was your plans. This is where your plans lead. Nowhere. That's what the fool who doesn't listen, who doesn't learn, who doesn't move forward, who doesn't believe God. He doesn't trust him. How many want to grow wise? Listen, and this is the last scripture, and then we're going to go watch soccer. Please don't text me. Okay. Great game by Australia, by the way, Jay. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. It's the beginning of wisdom. I don't mean fear like, oh my God, it's God. I'm talking about a respect, a reverence for God, his ways. Not just his sentences on scripture that you're going to legalize and make legalistic. I'm talking about the holistic of his word. The heart of it. The, the manifestation of the spirit in you which is changing you. The plans that you made that he's adjusting, give it to him. Watch him take a complicated puzzle of 10 billion pieces at a microscopic level that you can't even discern with a microscope and let him put it in a picture and let him put all things together for good for you. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but watch what the fool is. The fool despises wisdom and instruction. Why don't you bow your head? Hey, I'm Murph, and we really hope that you enjoyed this week's Adventure TV broadcast. We here at The Adventure have two main goals, to love God and to love people, and we hope that you felt that through this week's broadcast. If you would like to join us on Sunday mornings, we have services at 9 and 11, and also on adventurehome.org. Thank you again, and God bless. All creation worships you, all we never came to be. We'll bow before your majesty.